Well, thank you very much. In fact, uh, we're going to take care of a few things business here and then. Okay, so thank you very much. Before we move into the seventh uh, session of the entire seminar the first six focused on disciple making movements these next two sessions my wife says we're in our fun topics for us one is business as mission i'm going to talk on that for the next 45 minutes and then elaine's going to speak on the prophetic hearing god's voice for yourself and possibly for others so it's a blessing to others and then that'll, that'll wrap it up. And tonight, Zaysco and I are going to share. And uh, I'm expecting very good things for anybody that comes. Before I go into business discussion, that I want to follow through on this offer. Anybody who would like to commit, with God's help, I commit to obey what I have learned from the Bible about making disciples and planting churches and to share it with the lost and the people I influence. Sign and date. That's at the top here. No pressure whatsoever. Not everybody's called to this method or this tool. It's just a simple tool. But if you feel Holy Spirit invite, uh, leading you to proceed from here, I would ask that you fill out the commitment sheet, and then in two pages, it asks you to strategize, make some plans. They don't have to be real clear, you don't have much time, and just fill it out and turn it in. Okay? So again, there's absolutely no condemnation if this, if this isn't something you want to do, I trust God that the seed that was sown somehow 
will bear fruit in your heart and in your life. <clears throat> but for those who do want to continue and to get some additional training and get some coaching, I would ask that you fill one of these out, turn it in, and they're going to photocopy it and give it back to you so that you have your goals. Elaine and I do this once a year. We'll say, okay, we're reaching our goals. What do we want to do this year? So, if you're interested in continuing to live the practices of a disciple of multiplies, you want to learn more, and you want to start doing it, we will coach you one way or another. I talked with the academic dean. This needs approval, so please contact him. But we understand you have a strict schedule all week long. And that's understood. Maybe you feel like, oh, I would like to try this when I graduate. That's fine. If that's the case, contact Asia Highland Partners, who's ASO and his team, if that's the case. Now, in the cycle making movements, we dare to believe God to be possible. And I said to the, the staff and faculty, what, what's it going to take to make this work for a student who was hungry enough that even on their one day off, we understand you do outreach. Females one Saturday, males the other Saturday. Here's what I'm proposing, but again, this means if you are so hungry, you want to start putting this into practice. The men on the Saturday when the women are doing their outreach, we are proposing that somebody, maybe perhaps one of the leaders who did the small group breakouts, could get training and then come on campus, no electronics needed. They could come meet with you on that when the women are going out reach. If you have that Saturday free, with no pressure, you understand that's one day free. You know, if you just rest on that day, God wants you to have your rest. But if you wanted to do just one hour of outreach and meet with a coach. On that Saturday, that is it's possible, but no pressure. Uh, you have if you're that hungry, you want to do it now. I want to get some practice now, uh, and that's the opportunity you have. Okay. Any questions? Okay. So that being said, we will hand out the sheet to you if you want to, if you're interested. Again, this is no super spiritual. Anybody interested in making a commitment and filling out a form? It doesn't. It doesn't hurt our feelings. Thank you. So there's some hands there. You raise your hand. Yeah, raise your hands high. Now, if you, for those people who are here that are not on campus, those who are here that are not on campus, sign. There's a sign-up sheet outside. Any students or people from off campus sign the sign up sheet, and we will, Asia Highland Partners, will be back in touch with you about our next steps, what we're going to propose, what kind of training, how to support you on your journey. So, again, anybody ready, no pressure whatsoever. We just want to make it available to you if you feel you have the time. And the desire. Anybody else? And, yeah, one key point for those who did get a sheet, please put your email at the top of the sheet. Okay. Okay. And any questions on that?
Heavenly Father, we're so grateful, God, that you are the king of all the earth. You help us in our studies. You help us in our families. You help us in our work. All of life is worship. So Holy Spirit, come now and help us learn more about business as mission. In Jesus' name, I ask all. So thank you, Kohima Bible College, for allowing us to have this seminar. Thank you, Asia Idle Partners. Next slide. Business as mission is defined as business. It's about real, stable, sustainable, and profitable business with a kingdom of God approach, perspective, and impact, leading to a transformation of people and societies. Spiritually, economically, and socially to the greater glory of God. Next slide. Business as mission involves the whole church, not just the leaders, the whole church taking the whole gospel to the whole world. And that's taken from Dallas Business University, ddu.edu website. Next slide. There's various definitions and applications. I think I told this story, maybe not during the seminar. Elaine and I, she worked in the emergency room. I worked in the IT field. And we always wanted to be missional on our work, in our workplace. And when we retired, some people approached us and said, are you going to work full time for the Lord now? And we responded, we weren't aware it was a part-time option. You don't just serve God set, you know, on Sundays and live differently. So we believe that all of life is worship. How you handle your personal finances is worship to God. I want to honor you, God. How you treat your family members is worship. And business, if you're if God's called you to it. And we're all involved in some business, buying and selling can be part of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. So, business is mission has different definitions, different expressions. The first one is marketplace ministry. Sharing, shining your light in the business world. There's the evangelist back here. Thank you for coming. He can't be Let's say all of you work someplace in the city. He can't go where you go every day when you go to your job. But you go to your workplace. You can take the gospel there. I taught a business school, and at lunch in the morning before classes start, we had prayer in the gymnasium. I was employed at a Life science company. At lunchtime every other week, we had a prayer meeting. So you can let your light shine in the workplace. We call that marketplace ministry. Make it the marketplace. Second, it could be tent making. We all know the call, the one point in his life, made tents. Now that might have just been temporary for him, but he knew to be self supported. Elaine and I, God has blessed us in such a way we can take trips like this one at our own expense. God has blessed us. We, we have always been tithers. We believe you can outgive God. You can outgive God. The more you give to Him, He's going to bless you. Now, you can be uh, foolish with that, of course. You pay your bills first, tithe your local church. But when you do that, God promises, bring me the time, test me now. So you, that's one way you could support your own ministry, making tents, so to speak. Whether it's a network uh, business, you bring other sell products to families, uh, etc. So tent making. Third was business as transformation. 
there are people that go to very oppressed communities, very, very little opportunity to advance and maybe get education. Elaine and I were blessed to be a part of Youth with a Mission, and we went to a discipleship training school for three months, and we learned aquaponics. You grow fish, the water with the waste nourishes lettuce floating on rafts, and the roots for the lettuce grow, and you can sell that lettuce or feed the hungry. Give a man a fish, and he eats for a day. Teach him the fish, and he eats for a lifetime. So there's various creative ideas God can give us to go to places and transform the society. I once heard a story that told about a Buddhist village, I believe it was, very poor, one meal a day, and the uh, missionary there had an idea. The dirt was red, it was clay. And he said, why don't we make clay jars, clay pots? So they started making them, selling them. They did pretty well. They started hiring other Buddhist families in the community. Soon the whole community was eating two and three times a day. So business can transform a community. Business and transformation. When we were in Kyrgyzstan, there was a bad name for the missionaries, for the uh, Christians, the Muslims who had become believers, who were then pastors and getting money from overseas, supporting them. Muslims had a bad word for Baptists. Lazy Baptists. They don't work. They just get money from America. But when we were there, they had caught the vision. We are going to get credibility to our community. We are going to take care of ourselves, and we are going to have enough to give away. And they were beekeepers. They raised sheep. They raised chickens. They used shipping containers. I don't see many of those around here. The iron shipping containers uh, that they ship overseas. But then often you can buy those and turn them into something else. This man that was raising chickens, and he take care, took care of his family. He's a pastor. Uh, somebody else, one half of the shipping container was a woman's salon. She did their hair. The other side, the man was a barber, and he serviced telephones. So this way, they were taking care of their own needs. That's the Bible. And they were earning credibility. And it breaks us out of the box of the church. There's a saying we like to use to the United States. We're not there yet. But it's the mindset change that we have to make. The church has left the building. The church has left the building. So it gets us out of our holy huddle. And we take the gospel to where people are. Everybody, most everybody has a job and working somewhere. And you can go where they are and shine your light. Next slide, please. This shows an aquaponic system. In the background, it's hard to see probably that there are uh, containers with fish in them. And then there's these pipes, and they were growing lettuce. And in about a 10 week cycle, you can start a new new one and all the way to what's raised, cut it, either give it away, sell it. And in our Almaty, Kazakhstan, there's a man there doing this. And we on our outreach as part of our discipleship training school, we went to Almaty, Kazakhstan, helped him and lived among Muslims and were able to pray a lot for them. And then we you go and stay in Kazakhstan for 30 days. So at the end of 29 days, we went over to Kyrgyzstan. Beautiful people, beautiful Christians under intense persecution, but staying faithful to Jesus. Another man was a tractor mechanic, but he had highly he was respected in his community. So you can serve God with skills that you have. 
Next slide, please. Here's headlines from June 2023. Saudi Arabia plans to hire a million Filipinos in the next two years. There's an opportunity for Filipino believers to go to Saudi Arabia, a closed nation. It's said that the two things that can get you into a closed nation is oil, oil and gas, and food, agriculture. So for those who might have an interest in it, I love seeing plants. I have a garden home. And this idea of aquaponics thrilled me. And uh, we went and got trained in it. And we actually wrote up a proposal through Asia Island Partners to get grants to build one. Here's a dream. I pray God breathes on it and provides you finances. If somebody here, on, if you had the room here on campus, you could build a system and cut down on your food costs and maybe start a business, sell some of that lettuce outside here and uh, learn about business while people are here. Just an idea. So, and uh, if you're someone to sit, talk about tourism, construction, hospitality, healthcare. So Saudi Arabia is gonna let people in and it's just a one way of looking at it. Next slide. Work among the least reached, make internal impact, equip and serve business for transformation. B4T. Next slide. These are some of the examples we saw in Kurdistan. The last one, if you can show 11 and 12, uh, Missions Plumbing is a plumbing business in the United States, and their whole vision is to fund missions trips. What two of the people who were in our DTS uh, was the owner of this mission, uh, plumbing business, and he and his wife build homes in Mexico. They go, they take other people on short term trips and build homes from the profit that they make from being plumbers. Somebody was at a dinner party one night and then he was asked, what do you do for a living? And he answered him in this way. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ, cleverly disguised as a plumber. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ, cleverly disguised as an automobile repairman. You fill in the blanks. Maybe some of you have some skills that you could offer, serve other people, and ask them to pay you. That's okay. And uh, so just, I just want to enlarge your vision that you could go as a missionary and get paid to do it, actually. But that's what mission Business is mission is all about. Next slide. That's a story about the plumber. Next slide. <coughs> Part-time part option. Next slide. And our youth with the mission training, they asked us a question, which is more spiritual? Washing the dishes or raising the dead? Most of us would say, well, obviously, raising the dead, that more like God. Guess what? For you to have lunch, for you to have breakfast, somebody has to wash the dishes. Jesus said, the greatest among you will be those who serve. So that's just as spiritual a calling and an opportunity as praying for the sick and raising the dead. Next slide. So there were a lot of activities there. Some of them might be obviously local to Sunday school. That's, that's a spiritual thing. But reading a book, relaxing, you know, obedience to rest, you know, that's not so spiritual. Yes, it is. God wants you to rest. He doesn't want you to burn out. All things are worship. We're called in Genesis 1 to take dominion. And Jesus, he was the second Adam that restored the garden. 
everything we do, we can do with him. He can be with us. And of course, it's part of his plan to restore and to finish the Great Commission. Next slide. The parable of the talents, you may recall, one man was given one talent, one five, one ten, and he, they were all charged to do business with that asset, that resource, and make more. So, and but the one said, "Oh, I know you're ruthless. I didn't want to fail. I didn't want to make a mistake, so I just did it." And God was not happy with that one person. So use your gifts, and however they may be. I just want to speak, if I could, for a second, and say, don't. Be afraid of failing in business. It takes a lot of faith to run a business. You have to buy products. You don't know if you're going to be able to sell it. You don't know if you're going to be able to sell it at a profit. You might like, sit there for a year. You will never get rid of it. There you spend all that money. It takes great faith to step out and believe God. Now you have to hear God. Don't want to be foolish, but hear the voice of the Lord. He might call you to some creative idea. I know in this, I, I want to speak sensitively to this culture. I just want to declare the word of the Lord. Romans 8.1 says, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. If you're trying at a great effort to do something you feel God did, told you to do, you might fail. But what we say in the States is, Fail forward. Learn. That's how you learn the most. Some business leaders say that's when they learned the most when they went bankrupt. They learned, what can I miss? How, what can I change? And that's when they learned the most. So I just want to encourage you. I, I know maybe in your culture, there's shame if you fail. But if I, the kingdom I come from, it's okay to fail. In fact, we all fail in the kingdom I'm in. I was in an assembly of God church one day, and I looked around and I said to myself, God, there's a bunch of losers. There's a bunch of weirdos in this church. Do you use that term, weirdos? I don't know. I mean, somebody weird, somebody that's different and doesn't fit in. And I said, God, I'm the, there's a bunch of weirdos in this church. And he said, yeah, and you're one of them. And it's the truth. All of us, none of us have arrived, have we? Thank God for the grace of God. There's grace for you, brothers. There's grace for you, sisters. Yes, we all fail. But don't beat yourself up. Um, the devil says you are a hopeless hypocrite when you fail. You're a hope. There's no hope for you. You're a hypocrite. You know what God says? He says you are just a weak lover. I know you love me. You want to love me with all your heart. But you're just weak. There's, you have a weakness. Paul boasted of his weakness. He said, when I'm weak, that's when I need God. That's when I need God. So be encouraged. I want to speak something else over you. Hosea 2.16 says, no longer will you call me your master. You're going to call me your husband. Many of us labor under the burden. He God's a master. I have to do it right. I, I have to pray more. I have to read my Bible more. Yeah, that's the sound. But there's a religious spirit also. And just do what you can. And you know, if there's opportunity for improvement, yes, cooperate with the Holy Spirit. We can't do this in our own strength. You can't grip. Uh, real hard, right? Uh, to make it happen, it has to be the Holy Spirit working in your heart. Lovers outwork workers. If you love God, you're going to go the extra mile. To love, not I have to. I have to. I have to. If you can get and, and let mark my word, even when you don't feel like doing some things, you choose to do them. But if you can get beyond the have to, 
to the want to. God, do work in my heart. I want to do what's pleasing to you. So um, I want to release that. I want to release Philippians 1 6. He who started a good work in you is going to complete it. I don't I don't have a whole lot of faith in me that I'm gonna do good. I mean sometimes I get prideful and say, oh, I'm going to do this week. But I am the ultimate faith in Jesus Christ, who forever lives to make intercession for you. He who began a good work in you is going to complete. I know it's frustrating sometimes. We would like to be further along than we want to. But here's the thing. When you compare yourself with others, you're either going to get proud and say, I'm better than them, or you're going to get discouraged and beat down and say, I can never do what that other person does. So don't compare yourself. Just look into Jesus' eyes and say, Father, I love you. Is there anything you want me to change? Anything you want me to do different? Get your eyes on he who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what you're able to ask me to think. That's, that's the spirit in you. That is God. He is able to do that. In another place, I don't know where the, the, the scripture is, Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. That's a good confession. Just to look in the mirror and say, I am what I am by the grace of God. Now you want to cooperate you know, with, with the power, the, the grace that God gives you to do the do it. If you love him, you will keep his commandments, but ask him for help. He puts us in a corner, doesn't he? He gives us the Ten Commandments. We say, wow, you know, three or four of those, I need work. But he puts us in a he, And then we say, I need God. I can't do this in my own strength. So I just wanted to release that. I pray it brings some liberty and freedom to you. Next slide, please. I have a couple examples here um, of people that have been involved in business. Next slide. I think I'll jump over this to guy in Texas. Uh, they use polyurethane somehow to if uh, driveways are not level, they drill down and put that in there and it levels it out. So he's got a business and he has a vision to use the funds from that business to provide food, water, and shelter in the Sudan. Next slide. A friend of mine I worked with at a company, he has a computer business on the side. He works for a company as an IT tech support, but then he sells computers, fixes them, and in fact, I get my PC service from him. A lot of elderly people he serves and he, no charge. So that's the kind of thing you can serve your skills. Next slide. Henry and Asa have a Montessori school, and that provides employment for them. They're here serving, and it frees them up, but they have a business. Next slide. We have background in marketplace ministries. Next slide. Elaine has a lot of supernatural uh, stories to tell about the emergency room. She told one last night about. Miracles God did in the emergency. Next slide. Jesus will say that the one who serves the most will be the greatest. Joseph went from a promise, a dream that he had, it was tested in the pit, in the prison, and he ended up in the palace. It could be you have a, maybe you have a dream, maybe not a, you didn't have a physical dream. God put something in your heart that you'd like to accomplish, and you have need to wait on the Lord and get counsel, good wise counsel from other Christians, but keep giving it your best and looking for an opportunity for that to happen. 
Daniel was very self-disciplined in his studies. He had friends in a small community. They ate right. They had prayer life. And God gave him the ability to interpret dreams. So if we can bring solutions to the culture, we bring heaven to the culture. And it's usually as when we have a heart of a servant. We want to serve. God, here am I. We want to bring heaven to this community. Use me in some way. Next slide. So I had a book with me. I gave it away already. There's uh, somebody who can say so. His network with. He has a farm out in the country. He's involved in business. And uh, I gave it to him. It's called Doing Business God's Way by Dennis Peacock. Those who serve most effectively will lead. Think about it. The person who creates the most inexpensive but has the most features product, the one who serves you the best is the one who gets rewarded. Somebody came up with a solution that it, you know, outdoes all the other op options, and therefore everybody goes to them and buys. So if you can come up with solutions and serve people better than any other business, you will lead. In any business or trade, in the long run, servants will succeed. Next slide. There's a quote from Drucker here, whoever makes two blades of grass grow where only one was able to grow before is worthy of a society's fame. Next slide. There's lots of other examples I could give. I won't uh, take any more time on some of these. I can tell some stories, but Agricultural consulting. <clears throat> Next slide. Those free breakthrough. In your post pre state. This is a story taken from this book, Bose Free Breakthrough. During one of our early trips to a village where we wanted to see God break out, the people at the local mosque saw my name, Victor John, and knew that I was a Christian. So they wondered, why is he here? Yet God gave us tremendous openness with local families. They gave us a warm welcome and invited us to eat with them. We didn't have a Bible with us on that visit or any more spiritual laws, tracts. We didn't say, let's talk about Luke 10 and I'll teach you something. We just sat and listened. Build a relationship. Have a conversation. Start with casual. Listen. The following week, we learned that a notice had been posted outside the mosque Warning people not to walk to watch out for Christian activity. So I said, let's pray for the leader of that group and see what God will do. I went to talk with the leader, and I could feel that he was very suspicious. I explained, I have come in the name of the Lord. I come in peace. And we made an offer. We have done a survey and found that your women just sit around between one and four in the afternoon. Gossiping and fighting. Would you be willing to let us help your community? We can take, teach them sewing and knitting. He said, okay, but you have to do it where we can watch you. We said, fine. In an open spot with a thatched group attached to their place of worship, we set up two sewing machines. 
Suddenly, we had 45 women registered for training. The wife of one of the most affluent families in the village came forward and said, I will help you. She invited us to her home. And we said, yes, but only when your husband's at home. Very wise. She was very kind and quite wealthy. She was a woman of peace for us and brought us natural acceptance in the community. She also came to know the Lord. Within three months, the sewing training included over 200 women. We also started a financial self-help group, which today has over 500 women in it. We opened a bank account and they finance one another. I did this in the department. With $500, they gave $10 a month, and one of them, they had to give a business idea. They would get a loan and start a business. They'd have to pay it back, but they had a community where they saved together. The program is now running very well, and they have over $20,000 in their bank account. When I heard this, I thought, wow, you have more money than I did. Victor uh, John, the author of Break, uh, post free breakthrough. He also talks about five vocational ministry that they don't have money in post free. So, they anybody who wants to come and be a site maker, they say, Sure, what business is there? How are you going to support yourself? Next slide. The movement will have to depend on five vocational leaders. Okay, good businesses are life skills factory. Next slide. There is going to be a business as mission sign up sheet. We have one of those out there. Business as mission sign up sheet, separate from the DMM. No. I have one, and I'll put it out there after you. If you're interested in meeting with other people who feel called to business, uh, we're going to look for a leader to lead that group. And you can actually do this. Uh, we, do you have a sign up sheet for business with mission? I have one. I'll, I'll bring it out after our session. I have to find it. I think. And uh, we're almost done here. Baja actually has a topic called marketplace. So here are some next steps to consider, ponder, and plan about. Are you called to business? Maybe buy vocational? What current kind of business or life skills do you have to leverage for the kingdom of God? Somebody goes to work and they're trained to do Word documents, PowerPoint slides. Guess what? Who does the church call on? They need to do audio visual, right? The person who learns in the marketplace. So you can learn life skills. You can learn how to be punctual. You have to be on time. You have to get there on time. You, know, you have to be responsible. So it can, it can build a lot of life skills for you that will come in handy in the kingdom of God. In Waha, under topical studies, there's a marketplace topic. And if anybody's called to that, they can meet once a month and go over those. Museum of Discovery Bible Study. Are you called to missions? Missions? Are you called to missions? Yes. That's an obvious question, obvious answer. Where? How? Yes, if it's an unreached people group. Directly sharing the gospel, yes, that's fine. But some people might say, I want to be, I, I am a nurse, and I will go to Saudi Arabia and be a nurse in a Muslim nation. I will pray, I will fast, I will share every opportunity on that. So there's going to be a sign up sheet out there if you're interested. Next slide. Okay, thank you very much for your patience. Elaine is going to start now and take, and we're going to do the last session. Uh, start right into it now. No break. Um, she's saying.
Okay. And we'll do okay. Exactly, it's not. Oh. They got something. 
Yeah, so uh, my experience in Ottawa land was great. Uh, we love the people, we love the land. Uh, it's beautiful here in the mountains, nice and cool. We realize there's lots of growth, lots of opportunities. We uh, are thrilled to be here after hearing your revival history. It's great meeting with Zeso's family. And great, awesome students here at Kohima Bible School. We were overcome with the presence of God when he came in the first day and joined the worship of your very exuberant students. And we believe the world will be changed by students. We appreciate the faculty at Kohima Bible School. God bless you. Um, 
to the prophetic. But we will not take time to delve into those because of lack of time. In fact, I'm trying to do a whole like two day teaching on the prophetic in one hour with the help of the Holy Spirit to give you the basics because I really want you to have an activation where you can clearly hear the word of the Lord. But I will say this the prophetic word will always confirm something that God has already laid on your heart. And if it doesn't resonate, just smile person and put it on a shelf. Maybe uh, later on you'll realize that maybe it was a word and maybe it wasn't a word. You don't have to accept every word that is, is given to you, but if you get a word and it really resonates in your heart, you know that that was from God. Um, I know that one time I had just taken on a new job in a new emergency room and there was a well-known prophetess who came in um, to visit a patient and she told me, she goes, how long have you worked here? Um, and I said, just a couple of months. And she goes, well, um, you're not going to work here much longer. And my heart almost stopped. I thought, first of all, I thought, woo, maybe I'm going to get married. <laughs> and it goes somewhere else. And then I thought, woo, maybe I'm going to get fired. <laughs> so I started to run after her. She had already left. I started to run after her and God stopped me. And he said, if I told you this, Elaine, and I said, no, he said, put it on the shelf. Put it on the shelf. So when you get a prophetic word, it's always wise to uh, go to God with that prophetic word and say, she's true. This is true. He'll tell you. The prophetic has four E's to it. Um, equipping, it's for equipping of the saints. It's for exhorting people. It's to edify them. And it's to encourage them. And as we already said, Jesus said, you know, my sheep hear my voice. So um, if you're not sure that what you're hearing is from God, because Satan does try to talk to us, um, he did so with Jesus in the wilderness, then we should be like Paul um, and set about the Bereans. They search the scriptures from Acts 17, 10 to 12. They search the scriptures um, to see um, whether this is true or not. The prophetic word will always line up in principle with the word of God. Um, and I'll tell you an example of that. As a new Christian, um, I wanted to, um, I love books, so I was going to finish my lunch, and I had an issue I wanted to deal with, and I was going to go to the Christian bookstore and buy a book. And I felt the Holy Spirit say, my word is sufficient. And I said, no, 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 it's not my word is sufficient. Um, it's my grace is sufficient, but Lord, I don't know where that is because I'm not good at references. And again, very loud and clear, my word is sufficient. So I thought, oh, I'll be like to believe. So it's not Satan because Satan doesn't put me in God's word, okay? It's uh, not me because I'm going to go to the Christian bookstore. So it had to be the Holy Spirit. So the rest of the afternoon, I searched the scriptures for what I needed, and I found it. So if ever in doubt, search the scriptures. Um, and I just want to briefly mention here that many believers do not want to connect with the Holy Spirit uh, and meditate, say, God, what are you seeing here? Uh, because of fear. They view it as being a new age type of thing. But let me assure you that new agers who speak words and hear from the spirit realm are not listening to the Holy Spirit. They're listening to them. They only hear in part, they only know in part. Um, just like uh, Pharaoh's sorcerers could only uh, reproduce some of the um, signs and, and wonders and, and the after a while to stop. Um, these new agers don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah nor do they believe that he's the only way in terms of the life. I spent some time in, in ministry school in Toronto, Ontario, and one day on outreach, there was a very announcement where these mediums decided to set up tables and they charged five dollars for reading. Well, we decided that we would go down there and put up a table and we put three words of destiny for God. And so people were coming, we were giving them prophetic words. Some of the psychics actually came over and said, What's going on here? We gave them words from the Lord that we would seek the Lord. And um, a couple of them gave their lives to, to uh, Christ that day. It was a, uh, 
their shell. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? But that would never have happened if God's people had not gone right in the middle of the loss, got our hands dirty, and uh, and ministered uh, among them. Um, and you don't have to be afraid um, of the demonic. God is so much more powerful um, than that. I used to be involved in the New Age movement myself before I became a Christian. And I had some uh, things happen that um, made me very fearful. Now, I didn't turn to the Lord then, but I got rid of myself. Um, that I had, I used to get these paralyzed feelings at night. Um, and I was able to move and I wasn't able to, to scream. And uh, when I became a Christian, um, I still had that, but greatly reduced. So as a new Christian, uh, one day I had it, and I cried out to God and said, oh, Lord, uh, please help me with this. Uh, please don't strike me dead. I'm not afraid to say that I want to help me with this. And he gave me a vision. And in that vision was a lion in a cage. And he said, that, that lion is Satan. He can put his paw out of you. He can try to swipe at you, but he can't get you close. You are mom. And that brought me great relief. It was two months later that I read Second Peter, where Satan goes around like a boring hour. God is so loving. He knew I was going to eventually read it, but he knew I needed it that very hour, and he gave it to me. He's a good God. He is always a good God. Now, God created us with brains. We have a left brain and we have a right brain in the sphere. And the left brain um, is added to tasks, tasks considered very logical and rational. So if you are really good at math and science and things are just black and white, then you're functioning from the left side of your brain. The right side of your brain is best at artistic and creative and spontaneous tasks. You're rather intuitive. And we may be more uh, one-sided than the other, but as human beings, with both the left and the right side of the brain, we can train or focus on either side of the brain. For example, as a nurse, when I was computing medication dosages, I used my left side of my brain, not realizing it or focusing on that. I didn't say, oh, it ain't the left side of your brain. It just happened. And when I looked at a patient and it just didn't look right for some reason, but it wasn't anything obvious that I was using my intuitive or the right side of the brain. So today we're going to concentrate on using our right sides of the brain to hear from the Holy Spirit in a spontaneous flow of ideas that line up with the Word of God. It may not be exactly as worded in Scripture, but the principle applies. Um, for example, um, VBS, Vacation Bible School, is not found anywhere in the Bible, but the principle is study to show yourself approved. So how do we relax and let the Holy Spirit speak to us about what is, the, is on his heart for us as well as for others? We pray. We pray and we invite the Holy Spirit um, to speak to us. We quiet our hearts and um, we just uh, become still and we listen. Sometimes um, I put on very quiet um, instrumental music and sometimes I don't. But I just quiet myself. I may pray in the Spirit and then just say, Holy Spirit, come. What, what is on your heart today? Um, what do you want to say to me? Fill me anew. Take some slow, deep breaths. Relax your body. And then you listen. And then you start writing. You write down thoughts. You write down pictures. Um, and I would encourage you to um, to even keep a journal. I have a journal of just full of, of things that I've asked God. You can ask God questions and then listen for his voice. Like, what, what, what do I do today? And uh, he'll give it to you. Or, or should I um, should I go through this door? And he will He will show you that. But I have a journal just full of Holy Spirit things. And he speaks such loving things. Um, and I think you're going to find out today um, how loving he is with you as an individual. Um, and sometimes when I'm having a rather difficult day, I go and I get that journal and I start reading what he has said in there. And I'm just um, just so overjoyed with my God that I serve. 
Um, so if you're a writer and you like to uh, journal, I would encourage you um, to do that. Um, and as I said, sometimes you get very loving thoughts from him and you think, oh, this can't be God, but it is. And even when he disciplines us, even when he disciplines me, it's done with such love. I never come under condemnation um, or guilt when um, when he speaks to me. Even when he's been with me, it's done with such love, such love. So if you feel condemnation, if you ever feel shame or guilt, that is not from your heavenly father. And you can say, get behind me, Satan. I'm going to think God does. God created us with a supreme purpose of having a love relationship with him. And he is much more interested in having a relationship with you than what you can do for him. Uh, it's not religion. It's the, the right R is relationship with him. And ministry is born out from your relationship with him. I wanted to do two activations today. I think we might have more of that time. I remember telling you to bring a blank sheet of paper and an ink pen. Is there anybody that doesn't have a blank sheet of paper that may need one? Raise your hand. You need a blank sheet of paper. This is not this. Save this for the next one. <laughs> Anybody need a blank sheet of paper? The question I want you to write on, see God, we're going to fly our hearts. I'm going to get really still and say, Holy Spirit, speak to each individual here. The question I want you to close your eyes and ask the Holy Spirit, ask Father, Father, what are your thoughts towards me? What do you think about when you think of me? Take a few minutes, silently before him, start to write. And we're going to take about five minutes.
Is there anyone here who did not get anything written down from God or get a picture or hear from God in English? I'm going to encourage you to continue to sit before him. Um, when you get home every day, it just starts asking and just write down um, what it is because you can do it. You can do it. From the Lord. He may give you a picture, he may give you words. And again, um, I want to share a vision that I had um, not long after I became a Christian in prayer because I think it's going to help someone here um, today. You may be set to a little bit uh, free, maybe you can rewind. Um, but I had a vision as I was awake and praying, and I was transported to heaven. And there was the Father God. I, I could make out a shape, but I couldn't see any details because it was solid gold and so radiant and so beautiful. And all the people up there were, were gold. You could see that they were figures, but they were gold. And, and just millions of people around this throne. And we were praising, praising God. And then God leaned forward. From his throne. It was in my direction. And I thought, oh, it's like Isaiah, woe is me. I am toast. I am absolutely And so I tried to hide behind people, but you can't hide from God. And God, when I looked up, had his finger pointed right at me. And I silently went, so I said, I thought, I'm dead. So he was dead. And he uh, started to say, um, And so I started slowly. You can't take your eyes off of Father God. And I thought, woe is me. I am absolutely undone. So I started to go forward. He leaned further with his arms out like this. And I went running, and I jumped up in his lap, and I just felt so loved by the Father. I had just, I just cried tears of joy. Um, and you know what Father told me? He said the same thing, the same exact time that I was loving on you, I was doing the same thing with everybody else, because I can do that because I'm loved. He is so loving. So loving. So never fear that you are toast with God. You are not. You are not. I don't care what it is that you've done. He loves you. He died for you. And I, before we do the other activation, I just want, I could tell you millions of stories of uh, how God has um, transformed lives through the prophetic word. And that's why it's a passion with me. I want to see, my heart burden is to see God's people flowing in the prophetic, encouraging and edifying um, one another. And, um, but as, as you know, I worked in the emergency room and one time this um, woman was brought in by the police. She was under arrest and whoa, she was a wild woman. Uh, she was so violent, we had to tie her down, we had to fight her. She was drunk, she was under arrest, um, she was a prostitute. And um, so she was there for quite some time to try to hang down her, her get sober and uh, everything like that, and the police were with her. And so periodically I would just go in and I would just put my hand on her shoulder and pray and so the next day, um, she was going to be released from the hospital. I went in there and I said, um, you know, this is probably going to come across as really crazy. Um, because you know what? What seems crazy to us to say may really minister to the person. It may mean everything to them. So don't be afraid, no matter how wild the idea is, to, to try it out. 
And I told her, I said, do you believe in the power of prayer? She goes, I, I used to, to know the Lord, but I'm a mess, I'm a mess. And I said, well, he loves you very much. And when I look at you, I see a beautiful flower that people, because you've allowed them to, to pluck the petals off. And you yourself have even plucked the petals off. But I hear the Lord saying that if you seek his face and you seek him with all your heart, he will make you into a beautiful flower again. And nobody, but nobody, is going to pull those petals off. Now that doesn't sound real... Um, um, it might sound a little crazy, um, but it really ministered to her. And so I'll never forget the police on either side of her. She's handcuffed, and they're leaving her out to jail. And she's she's crying, and she's telling everybody. She goes, "God's a pastor, and people try to take my pebbles off, but if I see His face, He's going to make me into a more beautiful flower, and nobody will be able to take my petals off of my flower of my life." And I remember distinctly the two policemen, they were taller than she was, and they looked at one another, and I don't know whether you have this saying or this uh, thing in your culture or not, but this means she's really, I mean, you too, she's really crazy. And uh, she walked out. A couple of years went by, and a woman came into the emergency room, and somebody came and got me, and said, there's a woman asking for you. And when I went to the front, she goes, do you remember me? Do you remember me? And I said, you know what? I I see so many patients. I meet so many people. I'm so sorry. Tell me a little bit about my weekend. She goes, I'm the flower petal lady. And I said, I remember. I remember. And she said, you know what? I started seeking the God. God, I invited Jesus into my heart. And now I am in ministry. She says, my children are following God. And she says, I left my old ways. I have been delivered. And uh, we just did a happy dance right there. So a prophetic word can change somebody's life, absolutely transform it. It can absolutely, my life was transformed by a prophetic word. So with very little time left, uh, Holy Spirit, help us to do this. You all, does anybody not have a colored index color? Anybody have one? I'm going to ask you to remember the color. Remember the color. And spontaneous, when, when I, we're going to do two things here um, for lack of time. What I want you to do on one side is I want you to identify the yours without putting your name on it. Um, you can put your initials on it. You can draw a picture. You can draw a tree. Make it something absolutely unique to you. And uh, so that nobody else is going to have the same card. So, and then when you do that, turn it over, okay? So nobody, and when we pass these around, you're, you're not going to look at the picture side. They're going to be passed where um, nobody can turn it over and see whose it is. Um, so you're going to pass the, the blank side around. We're going to do two questions. Um, Marty and I are going to do this too. So what I want you to do, does everybody have a third mark where you know that it's yours and you know your color? Okay, I want you to pass it, pass it down to somebody, uh, exchange with somebody. And uh, once you've made your exchange, exchange it again, but keep it, keep it that, that, that side, okay? Everybody exchange. I say, Dave, give it to somebody else. Give it to somebody else. Once you put your mark on your paper, then uh, your index card, give it, just, you can get up and just give it to somebody else, okay? Give your card to someone else. 
Is there any confusion? Give your card to someone else. Yes. And when you give it to them, you get their signature. So everybody's still going to have a card. Just exchange it with somebody. But it's not going to be your card. So you should have a Okay, everybody. That's somebody else's car. Uh, Thank the Lord for this person that you have never seen her. You do not know whose car you have, but ask Holy Spirit to give you a scripture verse for that person. Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you a scripture verse for that person. And you can either write the reference or write the scripture on it. Remember that the prophetic word encourages. Equips, exhorts. So close your eyes and ask the Holy Spirit what scripture verse, what word would this unknown person, but known to you, Lord, what would encourage their heart? What scripture verse would you want to give them? Leave room for this second activation. Has everyone been able to write a scripture verse or a reference? Anybody not? Okay, I want you to stand up and without turning it over again, but you can keep keep the scripture verse face up, exchange it with someone else. No, 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 they're different folks. You get it to a different person and then you take their card. Everybody exchange. Everybody have a new card. And it's okay to exchange a couple of times if you want to. Okay, this time we're going to seek the Lord for a picture. Ask the Lord, give you a picture. And the first thing that pops in your mind, um, let's, let's say, for example, um, a cat. A cat jumps up into your mind. Um, pick that down or just write it down and like, see a picture of a cat and then ask the Holy Spirit to explain it. And that might sound crazy, uh, but a cat uh, can be um, 
A cat can see in the dark, for example, and uh, nobody uses a cat. <laughs> a cat can see in the dark and see very well, and and then explain the picture. Ask the Holy Spirit to explain that picture to you. And I feel like God is saying that you can see things that are going on. You can discern things that other people can't see, just like a cat. And you can look at an object. Um, if we had more time for activations, um, you could look at objects around you and say, Holy Spirit, give me a word for this person related to uh, a chair or a piano or whatever, whatever picture um, pops in your, your mind. Um, as I said, it might sound crazy to you, but I really believe that it's going to um, minister um, to them. So write down what the picture is and then ask the Holy Spirit, explain it more, a prophetic word for them that will encourage their heart. Is there anyone that needs more time? Okay, now we're going to do the color exchange here. <laughs> um, if you have an orange card in your hand, bring it up, turn it over. You can see names or whatever people put on it. Lay it down here with the, with the name here. You can come up here to the stage. Uh,
Okay, y'all are really good here. Okay. I've got a lot of oranges. Okay, if you had a yellow card in your hand originally, come up and pick out your card and take it back to you. I had a yellow card. This is my card. And if you had a horse or a retweet, come get your car. Come get your prophetic horse. Can you put a mark on this part? Yellow. Okay. Oh, no, no. Not the It was yours that you Yeah. 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 Do you remember your color? Okay. Well, let's we'll sort it out. Yes. If you are pink, come forward and find your car. Card and read the prophetic word on. And if you are green, come get your card. I 
Did anybody not get a card? <laughs> Is there anybody here that did not get a card with a scripture or a prophetic word? Raise your hand. Okay, if you did not get a, a card, card back, then, then come up here. And you searched it, and maybe somebody accidentally got yours. Uh, but you know what? God can rearrange this. God can rearrange. Does everybody have a card back? Everybody have a card in their hand? Anybody that not have a card, come forward. One, two, three. Okay, I have three cards here left. Everybody got a card back, right? Yes. Okay. Has everybody read their card? Is anybody unhappy with their word? <laughs> Are you encouraged by your word? And that was from the Lord. That was from the Lord. I really wish that we had more time uh, to do more activations, but this is just a little bit of how you can seek the Lord, seek the Lord, and uh, listen to his voice. Listen to it first for you personally. For you personally. Um, and uh, encourage one another. You don't have to be writing it down, but you can always encourage prophetically your friends, your neighbors, lost people with uh, just seek the Lord. What would you have to say in the course of the day? And uh, lots of times it just may be a scripture word, which is wonderful, wonderful to encourage them with them. You might get pictures, but never be hesitant to, uh, to share. Uh, because what may seem a little crazy to you may seem everything to them. And um, even if they say, no, it doesn't resonate. You know, we can be wrong. I've been wrong a number of times. And I just say, you know, even after all these years of being in prophetic ministry, I'm very honest. I'm still learning to hear from the Lord. So if it doesn't resonate in your heart, put it on a shelf. And... Uh, and, and to do that, I just really want you to encourage you to hear from God and even teach others to hear from God. I don't know in this country or not, but in my country, people run to prophetic conferences. They need a word from the Lord. And they just go from prophetic conference to prophetic conference to prophetic churches. And I firmly believe we all can prophesy. And we need to be teaching our people how to do this, how to hear from God. Um, for our own selves, and I, I really would want to encourage you uh, to start keeping a journal, even if it comes hard at first, uh, to say, Lord, here I am. What are your thoughts towards me today? Or better yet, too, uh, I do this frequently, is I've already prayed my petitions to you. I've already talked to you, uh, Lord, about um, what's on my heart, what's on your heart, and then listen. Because so many times we make prayer a one-way street. 
we we pray our petitions and then we get up and go. But we need to spend more time, more time saying, What's all you know about God? Speak to me. And you'll begin to, to uh, feel much more um, cool. So I hope that's just a little taste. I will tell you a funny story that my child before we left. I used to teach my son a Bible verse before the bus came in the morning before school, and we would repeat it and we would talk about it. And one day he was being very obstinate. He was being very, very stubborn. And I couldn't understand why. And the Bible verse was, be still and know that I am God. And the bus was coming down the road. And I was like, why are you being so stubborn about saying this verse that? And he said, because you're not God, on me. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, I have I need to teach a little bit more. I said, well, what's your practice when you come home from school? <laughs> but be blessed. <laughs> so, um, but I understand that there is a, a young man. You can come forward. You have a testimony to, that you would like to share. Where is the law? I just want to I just want to share some things that always got to do with me. I asked God what's your plan for me since you have to do me. For my family since God has to do me. I asked God what's your plan for me. And then I just pray this proportion that God reveals me some things. God he spoke directly to me and then saw me the words Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is not longer I live with, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I live now. In the flood, I live by faith, is the Son of God who loved me and gave me so for me. At first, I was so scared when God said me this words. Then I was, I thought of no saying. You know? When I did that words, uh, my body was just like getting current, uh, getting that so, so I told God, Lord, even though I cannot go to the States, please give me another chance next time. I will say this word. Lord. I just turned out to the window. I saw a brother. It's, Sorry for that. I don't know if it's my own name. I asked him, I asked for prayer, for peace. I went to my room after I prayed. He says to me, if you are side from God, and if you are side from people, God will decide from you. He said to me this word again. Now I am here in front of you all to say this word. Uh, if it took us, we are all here serving God. Um, let's serve the Lord with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength. God created us, so till our last heart break, let's change people and then let's bring the people to this place. Uh, so let's all pray now and then let's ask for God to bring the community to this place. Do pray for me, and I'll pray for you guys. Let's all pray. Yeah, 
the power that has, we need to be sharing more with one another and, and with the lost, the testimonies of, of God. And so um, this is the, I, I invite you all back tonight uh, to hear um, my husband and to say so speak. Um, it's a, a timely word of the Lord. I think you'd be greatly encouraged. So would the leadership have any announcements here before we go? It has been such a pleasure and honor for Marty and I to be here. You just do not know. You just do not know. And uh, before we leave, again, I want to say, if you do not have a card in your hand, come see me, okay? I'll give you one. Okay. Um, I guess we're dismissed. You say so? Where's your say so? <laughs> Yes, come back at five. Yes, five. Be there or be square, as you say. <laughs> God bless you all. Thank <laughs> you.